Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 20th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the trends over the last year has been vulnerabilities in security devices. And we have yet an additional example of this. This time it's SonicWall's Secure Road Remote Access, SRA, and also the SMA devices. Alan Moat found this and he sort of followed the pattern that Orange Zai originally implemented with Palo Alto Fortinet and Pulse Secure. He downloaded the virtual machine implementation of the sonic wall firewall and then essentially inspected the code now he found a number of serious vulnerabilities for example a sql injection vulnerability does not require authentication and allows access to arbitrary data that one is rather easy to implement but there are also some arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities like for example a buffer overflow in libsys.so and a third unauthenticated vulnerability that allows directory traverse in addition he found three other vulnerabilities that do require some form of authentication SonicWall did patch these vulnerabilities in mid-December, but Alan, nice of him to wait till now to actually publish the blog post with quite a bit of detail about how to exploit these vulnerabilities. So better make sure you are patched. And talking about patches you should have applied by now, well, uh, the Microsoft February patch Tuesday is just about a week old, and we do have a uh, exploit now for a remote code execution in SQL Server reporting services. This was CVE 2020-06-18. MDSEC originally found this vulnerability and they now published a blog post similar to the one I just mentioned with proof of concept code to achieve arbitrary code execution, essentially how to sort of run a PowerShell script using this vulnerability. The author of the blog post, uh, Sarush Dalili, uh, does also point out that if you suspect that your SQL server has been compromised, to definitely swap the machine key as If an attacker had access to that, they may be able to still get code execution even after you patch the system. And yes, uh, ransomware is an international problem. And as a result, it's no surprise to find that the Swiss Information Security Authority has published uh, some of the lessons learned from Switzerland. And what I kind of like about the document is that it's really getting down to the point. And I'm quoting here, a technical analysis of the instance revealed that the IT security of the companies affected was often incomplete and the usual best practices were not fully observed. Now with that, they also provide a link to a security checklist that I found quite interesting, not really different from other checklists that I've seen, but kind of very applicable. And I think to the point and sort of what you should prioritize to protect yourself against the ransomware and other threats. And I think that lesson about sort of incomplete uh, security controls and not following best practices is probably true worldwide. Another comment about this, also if you are having problems with ransomware, well, uh, who knows what else is in your network. Ransomware is sometimes quite sophisticated, but not sort of at the top of the food chain as far as attackers go. So you're probably missing a bunch of stuff if ransomware is currently your main issue. And talking about more sophisticated exploit, Eclipsium published a blog post pointing out that a lot of firmware used in various devices and peripherals is typically not digitally signed and as a result, easily replaced. Now, this affects devices across pretty much all manufacturers and also a wide range of peripherals. They point out Wi-Fi adapters, USB hubs, trackpads, and of course, cameras. 
The problem is that even with a simple USB device, an attacker who is able to compromise hardware would be able to essentially take over your system. Just remember sort of fairer little toys like the USB rubber ducky that sort of can uh, impersonate various USB devices. Similar code could be installed on any one of these peripherals. Not much you can really do about this uh, other than hope that manufacturers will act and digitally sign their firmware. Well, that's it for today. And if you're interested uh, today on Thursday at 4 p.m., I'll be speaking here in Jacksonville at the ISC Square meeting. If you're searching for ISC Square Jacksonville, you should find a link to the details. That's it. And thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.